Geospatial analysis has always been an important topic in data, but hard to dive into. One big reason for this is that it's just hard to get you set up. There are so many standards, tools, and dependency in geospatial that it can be challenging to just iterate to walk around data, transform it, and plot something. That being said, we have a couple of new tools, including DuckDB, which helps you move much faster, or should I say, quack louder. In this video, we'll recap the really basic around geospatial data, just enough to start building and create this fantastic heat map about electric vehicles, charging spots, using DuckDB and some Python library for the visualization. So if you're new to geospatial analysis, this video is for you. And if you're already experienced with geospatial, but new to DuckDB and modern Duck, you might still get a wow at the end of this video. So let's dive in. To start your journey around geospatial, you need essentially three things. First thing is knowledge around geospatial analysis. That would include understanding geometries, spatial relationship and spatial shell joins, understanding standard file formats for geospatial. The second thing is a data tool to read, process and export geospatial data. And the third thing is a tool to visualize and plot what you are doing and iterate. This video only aims to cover some of the geospatial concepts that we'll need to build this map but I will leave more resources for you if you want to dig further. When working with geospatial function, you will learn how to work with geometry. In short, this can be a point, line, polygon, or a collection of them. A lot of databases support spatial function and spatial type to store these geometries. PostGIS is the gold standard here. It has a lot of spatial function prefixes with ST underscore, which stands for spatial and temporal. So if you have a coordinate, a point in spatial type, the way you would convert it in PostGIS and DuckDB also is by using this function ST point. And in DuckDB, the only requirement is to install and load the spatial extension. So aside from geometries and spatial function, the other important thing to understand is the file format in geospatial. To share geospatial data, there are multiple formats you can work with. Vector data, which represent the discrete features we just discussed, such as points, line, and polygons, example, city, location, road, and raster data is more like a photo and is used to represent continuous information. It consists of a grid of a cell or pixel, and each cell has a value representing something like temperature, elevation, or colors in a satellite image. On the web, you would find both, but usually vector data are easy to share because of their smaller size. GeoJSON is the easiest one to work with as you can directly edit, but it's pretty inefficient in terms of size and performance. DuckDB has a lot of possibility to read and write from many of these, and you can access actually all the drivers possibility by using from ST driver. This makes it super useful again to convert and join data in a common format, which is usually a big step for a geospatial project. And again, there are a lot of standards, so it's nice to be able to prepare all your geo data with a single tool. All right, now that we have the crash course around the spatial type, the spatial function and the file formats, let's start to get you set up with the actual tools. So you can use SQL in DuckDB, but you will still need something to display the data. Two things I would recommend here. You can either work with the CLI or use some third-party tool to explore your GeoJSON. So you would export the final data set in DuckDB to a GeoJSON file and read that one. For example, in VS Code, you can actually visualize any GeoJSON directly with an extension. The other common way, and the one we'll use, is to use Python in a notebook environment to directly render the map. We'll use Google Colab, but any notebook environment is good for you. It's just for the simplicity of sharing and get you started. And regarding the data viz library, there are many ones available. List map is definitely interesting to use and pretty mature. For this video, however, I will show you a new kit on the block, which is really performant and doesn't use GeoJSON as an intermediate step to transfer the data to the front end like a lot of these tools do. The library is called Longboard and it's just a Python library as it is with DuckDB. Now let's zoom in on the code and the data. For this tutorial, we'll use data from OpenChargeMap, OCM, the goal of this website is to document the world is electric vehicle charging points. And they have produced a data set over 200,000 charging point locations around the world. And the data is sourced both from volunteers as well as official sources. But what is great is that they have a public API, easy to use and well documented. Yeah, this is tears. 
it's almost too perfect. To get the charging point data, we can do this with a single request and filter by a bounding box. Uh, and I will filter here around France. And I want to understand what are the dead zones if I'm traveling with an electric vehicle in France. To get the bounding box coordinate around France, I asked my best friend. I'm just kidding. So I asked ChatGPT to generate this for me. It doesn't have to be super accurate, so that's good for me. But now that we covered the data source, let's dive into the actual code. All right, we all dive into the notebook. You can find it into the description. It's a Google collab with just one link and a Google account. You have access on a Python runtime. And the first thing we're gonna do is install the dependencies. We're gonna install the latest version of DuckDB 1.0 at this point of this video. And we're gonna also install Lonboard, uh, which is the library that we spoke about for visualization and plotting maps. I'm doing a weird workaround here where I'm uninstalling Malloy because I don't need it and it's incompatible. It has a uh, hard uh, constraints against DuckDB 1.0. Once it's done, uh, the next thing I wanna do is create a DuckDB connection. And here it's creating a DuckDB connection in memory. As a reminder, DuckDB is an OLAP in process database. So it's gonna be running into the same process, into the same Python process, I mean. And if you don't persist the data to a file or to your DuckDB file format, the data is gonna be lost. But we're gonna see right after how to persist this data uh, while working with MotherDuck. Next thing you're gonna do is install and load the extension. So if you're not familiar with DuckDB extension, you might not because a lot of extension nowadays get auto-loaded for you in the background. You don't have to do it by yourself, but some extension like the spatial extension and community extension require you explicitly to install and load uh, those extensions. The next thing is that I built uh, the URL to get the data from the API for uh, the electric vehicle charging point. And as you can see here, I'm passing a filter as we discussed the bounding box with basically the coordinates of the France country. Finally, I'm creating a table to ingest this data and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna run it and explain a bit that there is a lot of magic happening here. The first one is that we are actually creating an API, which is on an HTTPS endpoint, uh, directly using SQL. And there is a DuckDB extension that's being loaded behind the scene, which is HTTPFS. And the second point magic is that we use the function read JSON auto to directly parse uh, the JSON that is being returned and I ha we have directly a nice table to be queried. And so this is done in really 12 seconds. That was pretty fast. And so we can uh, describe uh, this table and you can see that I have all the type I want and I have also a complex struct and our latitude and longitude will be in interest in vertices where we're gonna uh, constrict our geometry. And if you want to look what the data looks like, you can also just uh, query this table DuckDB has a nice uh, from first statement, which avoid you to basically do just the select star. If I do that, you see I have a sample of the data. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is basically create our geometries. And as we introduced in the beginning of the video, you can create points, line and polygon. For the heat map, we're gonna create multiple points. And here you see I'm using uh, the special uh, function, which is ST point. If you're familiar with PostGIS, it's pretty similar. And here I'm passing the longitude and latitude. Another thing magic is that if you remember, this was a complex struct, address info, and how to access it is just with a dot limitation. And so this is the longitude uh, field, which is part of the struct address info and the latitude um, that's my geometry. I keep the title and I keep the ID, which is identifying um, the unique ID for the electric vehicle charging spot. All right, I'm gonna run that query. And uh, that's pretty much it. You see that once really fast. And now we have, if we inspect that, uh, that data uh, point, which is a spatial type uh, with uh, a latitude and a longitude, and then we still have the ID and the title. So that's pretty much it now. We only need to display this. And with Longboard, again, you can grab the heatmap uh, layer object, uh, use the from DuckDB method and pass the query which contain basically here the, the data. So this is was my, my query, right? And uh, the DuckDB connection. And this is how I initiate the map and will display it. 
So here in five seconds, uh, you see I have uh, my map from uh, France that is being displayed. And you see I can, uh, I can zoom in to the different things. I have actually a bit more uh, than France, probably because the bounding box was taking, you see the limit here of France and we can see as it's uh, you know, a box that uh, it cover a bit, a bit more to be sure to cover entirely uh, France, but uh, that doesn't matter. So what is fun is that you can see that in the middle of France, like right in the middle here, it's kind of a dead spot. There is not that much uh, charging, electric charging spot. The second thing I want to show you is how to uh, use this with MotherDuck. So you can create uh, an account and use the feed here and also uh, retrieve your token to the UI. I put the links over there. And once it's done, you can put it basically uh, here as a, you see, I have the name Modern Duck token. You put your value of your own secret there. And what we do here is just uh, populating the Modern Duck on uh, token environment, which is stored in the notebook as an environment variable. And now that it is ready, um, we see basically it's kind of the same step, right? Here, instead of uh, not passing anything, so we had uh, just basically uh, this, the only difference to connect to Mother Duck is this. And I'm going to be able to basically uh, use the cloud compute and put my table over there uh, as a DuckDB table. So the rest is pretty much the same. The only thing that changed here is basically I'm create a database if not exist a uh, Geo Playground and I'm create uh, the table uh, to persist uh, the data. So the nice thing here is that because Mother Duck is on the cloud, especially when you're uh, pulling data from uh, AWS S3, for example, that can be much faster because this is happening uh, on the cloud. And now you can see that I can show my database and I have a plenty of database, but this is the, the, the database we, we just created. And that's the one you should uh, see if you're going through the tutorial. And next basically is just doing the same query, but instead I'm gonna create a table and persist that data. And so that is done. And so now uh, this query basically that I'm running here, what, which was similar to the one I did before, is running on the cloud and those also on uh, above it. And what is nice here is that now you see, instead of passing the query, I can directly um, query the table that contains uh, the geometry for, uh, for friends and display the data. We get basically the, the same uh, visualization and it's, a, uh, of course, a bit much faster than what we use with a local uh, DuckDB. The last thing I want to uh, show you is that how you can uh, share your uh, geometry data set. Um, basically, the one thing you can do is use MotherDuck Share. It's a feature from MotherDuck to share a database. So the only thing you need to do is create a share. So this is the uh, the name of the share I'm giving, and this is the from the from the database. Um, anyone here with the share uh, can access this, so it's unrestricted. And basically, anyone with this uh, share URL can attach and access this data. Another way that you can share uh, this kind of data, uh, as we talked initially in the video, is to use GeoJSON. Again, I wouldn't recommend for a large data set because GeoJSON is not really performant. There is also GeoParquet that's doing pretty well uh, for that but it's really handy because you can inspect the JSON directly. And so again, DuckDB can support that. Uh, we saw that earlier with the different drivers. And here, uh, basically, this is how you export to GeoJSON. And so if I'm running this, I'm gonna export um, my uh, current uh, modern duck table to uh, basically a local file. And if I go here, you see I have my JSON uh, ready that I can download and share. All right, time to wrap up what we covered. We introduced different concepts around geospatial and tooling. So how DuckDB is a nice Swiss Army knife for geospatial data analysis, as it enables us to quickly pull and transform from various spatial formats and directly actually from an API. We also saw how easy it is to use with other Python library like Longboard for plotting, and we leverage Modern Duck also for cloud computing and storage for our digital table asset. Finally, we saw how easy it is to create a Modern Duck share or export your data to a local file like GeoJSON. So let me know in the comments what we'd like to see next around spatial, and until then, Keep quacking and keep coding.